Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this evening's quarterfinals debate. My name is Bruce Chang, and I am the chairman of this debate. The timekeeper is Oliver Rose, and I, uh, uh, um, this debate will be judged by a panel of three adjudicators who are Mr. Uh, Mr. Pass, uh, pa pa sorry, Pass Salutes, uh, Mr. Mr. Wallon the third and Mr. Hazel. The topic of this debate is that there should be external doors on all toilets. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Greenango International High School. The negative team seated to my left is from Greenango International High School. The speaking time for this debate is four minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time, and a double bell will sound at the speaking time. Please ensure that your mobile phone has switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, James Wood. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this evening's debate is that there should be external doors on all toilets at school. We define the word should as to indicate an act of obligation. We define an external toilet as a lockable hinge door that can be used to enter or leave a toilet block. It is important to note that the toilets without external do doors will become unisex toilets, meaning that the toilets and sinks can be used by all genders. Lastly, we define schools as an institution for educating children. Therefore, we interpret the topic as that we should include a door used as an entrance to all bathroom blocks in education institutions, unisex or same-sex. As the affirmative team, we firmly deem the statement to be true. Tonight, as first speaker, I will discuss the privacy and security aspects of this topic. Our second speaker will explain the hygiene and well-being issues of removing these doors. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team's case. Now to my first point. Removing the door to the bathroom will threaten the privacy that these spaces normally provide. Recent studies focusing on the use of restrooms without external doors reveal that many children are unwilling to use them. When asked why they feel uncomfortable using the bathroom at school, the responses were somewhat predictable cleanliness, embarrassment, social stigmas, etc. However, most of these issues boil down to one common denominator, the lack of privacy. This is particularly relevant at the adolescent age as students are going through countless physical and emotional changes and many of these students will appreciate having their privacy respected in a place such as a bathroom. As a result, many children make a choice to hold it until they get home. This has compelled students to limit their intake of fluids and force their bodies to adapt to the school schedule. Some children had held off from visiting the, for the bathroom for such a period of time that more than one of them was diagnosed with a UTI or a urinary tract infection. If the UTI remains untreated, it can recur, provoke recurrent infections which commonly lead to permanent kidney damage or prostate infections. This point is backed up by a survey conducted by sociologist Irving Goldman published in the journal Urban Life, which found that over 60% of Australians would delay using a public restroom if they felt that their privacy has been compromised. If having something as simple as an external door can so drastically improve student impressions of toilets, what reason is there to hesitate? My second point is that vandalism in school bathrooms after school hours will commonly occur without an external door. In schools without local buildings or bathroom units on the exterior side of school, students often subject their own school toilets to vandalism just for attention, under the, under the assumption that they won't get caught. As an example, in late 2021, school students had taken to defacing public bathrooms as a social media trend, many of them being school toilets. You cannot help but think, if these bathrooms were provided with the proper security measures, being something as simple as an external door, most of the damage from these events could be easily prevented. In one high school alone in Sydney Southwest, $3,000 was required to repair a series of damages by an unknown abuser. The school haven't recently removed their external door. Without something as simple as a basic lockable front door, vandals will continue to take advantage of the opportunity. As I've, already, as, as I've already made clear, students are struggling to accept these bathrooms as replacements from what we know as regular toilets with doors. In some cases, toilet blocks have even been defaced to a point where they become completely unusable. Walking into one of them and seeing it vandalised will in no way encourage them to accept it. Is this something that we should want? 
So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the affirmative team, believe that there should be external doors on all toilets at school. Removing the door that separates, separates the outside world to our private world will only encourage us to distance ourselves further away from the facilities. If we are doing anything to change toilet blocks, it should be in the other direction. On the first negative speaker, Sarah Shaken. Good evening, Mr. Chairperson and esteemed audience members. The topic of tonight's day, debate is that schools should have toilets that have external doors. As the negative team, we firmly believe that toilets in schools should not have external doors. We do agree with the definition provided by the opposing team. As the first speaker, I'm going to be talking about the safety issues that are caused by external doors and the health problems. The, spec the second speaker will be talking about how having no external doors supports the gender queer community and how it saves money, time, and resources. Our third speaker will summarize our points, rebut the opposition's arguments, and close our side of the debate. Before I move on to our side's points, I'd like to present a few flaws of the other team's arguments. The first affirmative speaker is trying to tell you that Taking away the external doors of a toilet will um, give students less privacy. But what do you need the privacy for? Washing your hands? You still have a locked door to, to go to the bathroom with. We're not taking that away. The only thing that is changed is that you don't have to open a door. The first of the speakers also tried to tell you that vandalism will become a lot more just because there is an, ex an external door. Affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that um, having locked doors outside of the toilets will prevent this. But the doors outside of toilets are only locked after school hours. During school hours, anybody can go in there and anybody can vandalize. Vandalism comes from students going inside a toilet where they know that nobody else will be able to see what they're doing. With, without these doors, there won't be that and the teachers can monitor and check that this won't happen. Initially, having external doors and toilets creates a room. For example, with external doors, when going to the toilet, you have to open the door to walk into the bathroom. Without them, you just have to walk inside. It doesn't change much. There are many solutions to provide the privacy that students need. My first point is that toilets are rife with vaping, smoking, and substance abuse. Smoking and vaping at such a young age can lead to a much shorter lifetime filled with many struggles. The removal of external doors and toilets can allow smoking, substance abuse, and vaping to be weeded out at schools, since the smoke from vapes and cigarettes will be easily noticeable. WA's Department of Health says vaping has been known to increase blood pressure and heart rate. This in turn causes the arteries to stiffen, which can lead to strokes and heart attacks. The Australian Department of Health and Aged Care states that smoking can lead to a lower lifespan, increase your risk of illnesses such as cancer, diabetes, and a loss of fertility. Without anyone to ensure that the students are safe, um, this could happen a lot often. And with, without these doors, not as many students will be encouraged to do that. My 
second point is, is that the door handle that we have to open has many germs in it. We're stuck in a pandemic right now. We know how important sanitation is. If we can just remove another thing for germs to collect, how much healthier will we be? To conclude, Mr. Chapel and esteemed audience, it is clearly better not to have external doors and toilets. They only provide a haven for bacteria and a hidden space for bullies, smokes, and vapes to harm the students. So the choice is yours. Would you rather keep the system the way it is and ruin children's health and safety, or easily modify the system for the benefit of many? Thank you. I call upon the second and third speaker, Brian Key. Good evening, Mr. Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that there should be external doors and all toilets at school. We, the affirmative team, adamantly stress that this statement is unequivocally true. Our first affirmative speaker has already evaluated the privacy and security complications relating to this. Tonight, as the second speaker, I will convey to you all that toilets without external doors produce countless hygienic and well-being difficulties for all students. However, before I further establish our team's case, I will first highlight some critical flaws in the opposition's argument. The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that students don't use the bathrooms and sinks for anything, making it useless. However, this is false because students need the bathroom space to calm down, wash their face, and etc. In fact, bathrooms are of the only private places students have, making it the only option for them to calm down um, in tough times. Now that these flaws have been made clear, I will now continue my argument. Although there are hygienic problems when using toilet, the toilet door, there are still countless hygienic issues that would come with remo removing the door. It is proven by the World Health Organization that diseases and infections such as COVID are more easily transmitted through the air from their nose or mouth. The toilets are where many of these diseases leave a person and transmit somewhere else. It is common that people go to the bathroom to blow their noses, but the bathroom is also where you're more likely to find every other bodily fluid, including urine, vomit, and blood. This is why, we pre this is why preventing the spread of these diseases calls for a door because students passing outside will have a higher chance to contract these diseases or infections if there aren't external doors. In fact, rather than remove the doors completely, replacing them with doors that minimize contact, such as ones that can be pushed open with a shoe, can easily be reinstated instead. This will, pre this will prevent the transmission of diseases or illness from door handles, a common point why schools want to remove external doors for toilets in the first place. However, it is not just a problem of transmitting diseases that comes as a cost to remove external doors and toilets. Normally, the smell and sounds of toilets is kept well within the toilet blocks because the exterior doors act as a barrier. Now imagine if those doors are removed. The ghastly smells and sounds would seep into the corridors and students passing by would be able to detect them. In fact, students from Golden Grove and Modbury High the two South Australian schools who have removed external doors to toilets have reported many appalling smells and sounds, disrupting classrooms even from a fair distance away from the toilet blocks. In fact, one of the reasons that the South Australian Department of Education made it mandatory for the external doors to be reinstalled in both schools was because of the numerous complaints and issues which emerged from this controversial decision. 
To further reinforce this point, I would like to point out that having such hygienic problems like this will impact the well-being of students as well as increase anxiety. Our first speaker has already told you, avoiding the school toilets can lead to many health problems for our students. The same is true for well-being. According to Dr. Ben Cleveland from the University of Northern, concern or anxiety about the school toilets may impact their health and well-being, and it is quite probable that it will increase their ability to engage effectively in learning and school in general. By removing the external doors of school toilets, we may be enforcing the idea to students that school toilets are unsafe or embarrassing to use. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the affirmative team, firmly believe that we should keep external doors in all schools. The hygiene, safety and well-being issues by far outweigh a tokenistic change that will not produce any results. Schools should not be creating an uncomfortable and unsafe environment for their own students by implementing this controversial change. Thank you. I call upon the second negative speaker, the Bayani Mohonka. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Adjudicator, and members of the audience. The topic for tonight's debate is that there should be external doors on all the toilets at schools. As the negative team, we firmly believe that this statement is false. Today I will be talking about having no external doors solves the problem of exclusion in the genderqueer community. I will also be talking about how not having external doors saves money, time, and resources, as nothing is spent behind manufacturing. Before I move on to my points, however, I would like to raise some flaws in the opposing team and rebut their arguments. As, <clears throat> as our first speaker mentioned, there is a lot of bacteria on toilet door handles. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that with external doors, the spread of germs will be reduced. In fact, a study conducted by a research institute has found that public toilet door handles contain a lot of a bacteria known as Staphylococcus aureus, which is the main reason behind diseases as severe as pneumonia. Uh, the room created by the external doors uh, that the affirmative, uh, affirmative team claims for privacy is also a haven for bullying, as students can harass other students freely in that space. Initially, having external doors could cause people that are part of the genderqueer community discomfort or shame. Especially for people that identify as non-binary or agender, this would be a big problem. As stated by Health Direct, and I quote, research has shown that LGBTQ plus Australians experience higher rates of mental illness and distress than those who are not sex, agender, or sexually diverse. This is often related to the stigma, discrimination, and abuse faced by the LGBTQ plus community. As this statement suggests, people that are part of the genderqueer community already suffer a great deal of discrimination, and Although the problem of choosing which restroom to use may seem trivial to many, to them it would seem much more than that, especially with the existing problems they face. Many people who have not expressed their gender identity to the public or their families may experience discomfort going into a bathroom that does not align with the gender they were assigned at birth. Rainbow Health claims that there has been a large increase in the amount of teenagers in the LGBTQ plus community. This means that schools are directly related <coughs> to the issue. For people such as these, not being able to go into their preferred bathroom creates a very high chance of them experiencing dysphoria, which means that having a general dissatisfaction with life. 
This research shows that although the problem of choosing which bathroom to go into may seem insignificant and unimportant, it can cause emotional and mental trauma to many people. And the simple and effective solution is to remove, or not to build, external toilet doors at schools. Why not implement the solution when it's a win-win for both sides? Glenanga International High School has toilets that are just separate cubicles and don't have external doors at all. Many new primary schools are also implementing this facility. My second point is that time, money and resources are saved when no external doors have to be made. The primary resource when manufacturing doors is wood. And if they no longer have to be manufactured, then many resources, money and time are saved. According to the World Resources Institute, the rate of deforestation increased by 12% in 2020. If external doors are no longer manufactured, then, although quite minor compared to the scale of things, a difference is being made in the environment. Furthermore, without external doors, less toilet cubicles have to be made, therefore taking up less space in the building, and once again, saving time, money, and resources. To conclude, schools should not have external toilet doors. For the above stated reasons, having no external doors means we are inclusive of the genderqueer community and it saves money, time, and resources. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that there should be external doors on all toilets at school. By the end of my speech, I will leave you in no doubt that this statement is true, but before I summarise our case, I will rebut the opposing team. The second negative speaker has stated that we, the affirmative team, have stated that the door handles make better hygiene. This is a straw man fallacy, as we actually stated that we can have external doors without handles implemented. The second speaker of the opposition has argued that the cost of the external door is far too much. This point is outright ridiculous, since the benefits far outweigh the costs, which our speakers have already explained, privacy issues, vandalism, and hygiene points. And hygiene, and hygiene issues. In fact, door installations only, to, only cost as little as $124, and, and, and school doors are really not that much. The first negative speaker has tried to say that vandalism will only happen in school time. This may be true, although the damage will be far less likely to occur during, because of school's high level of security. Only a very small amount of students will actually deface their school toilets in school time, and removing the school door would be unfair on the overwhelming majority that do not vandalise. The first negative speaker has argued that because the people touch the ha handles of the doors are more likely to contact diseases. However, this is easily preventable. For example, cleaning the handle regularly, like maybe every hour. Furthermore, there will still be hygiene problems as our second speaker has already told you, that will come with removing the external doors. The second speaker has said that there is abuse that has said that there is an abuse problem with um, has said that there is a problem with abuse for transgender kids currently um, in school to, in single sex toilets. Removing external doors removes this risk. The fact is, bullying is a problem that needs to be dealt with very severely because it is not just in toilets. Removing doors does not actually reduce the rate of bullying much because bullies will just find another place to do it. In conclusion, tonight our first speaker has begun by explaining how removing the external door to toilets will threaten the privacy, to the privacy that toilets normally provide and the issues caused by this. 
He has also talked about the potential vandalism that can occur if we remove the external doors and how it can severely affect a school. Our second speaker has gone on to talk about the hygienic issues that will come with removing the external doors and how it will affect student well-being. So, Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, is it really worth to have a few hygienic benefits and, less, and slightly less bullying when we have privacy and health issues coming as a cost of it? Are we going to watch as our schools become more unhygienic and risk more vandalism? Schools should be clean and healthy and students should be less afraid of going to toilets, which is why we, the affirmative team, strongly say that there should be external doors on all toilets at school. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. As we all know, the topic for tonight's debate is that there should be external doors on all school toilets. As a negative team, we firmly disagree with the statement. While our opposition presented some healthy points, I would like to point out a few flaws in their arguments. Their first affirmative speaker suggested that if children the children will be more likely to vandalize on school bathrooms if there are external if there are no external doors. However, this is incorrect. If you think about it, children that vandalize or perform any inappropriate activities in the toilets will be more likely caught if their external doors are removed. Therefore, teachers will be able to keep a closer eye on these children. The affirmative, affirmative team also suggested the removing, removing external doors com compromises the students' privacy and could make them uncomfortable. That isn't what makes people uncomfortable. The truth is, forcing people, especially those of the gender queer community, to choose a certain gendered bathroom to go to, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what makes people uncomfortable. And this is not fair. As for the issue of privacy, students are still provided with lockable cubicles. So having no external doors is just a step to breaking gender barriers for the queer community and making schools a safer and more comfortable place for everyone. Our fellow opposition also tried to convince you that removing the external toilet doors will be unhygienic as there will be a greater spread of germs and I quote, cause COVID. However, with all due respect, this statement is illogical because if students are washing their hands correctly, there will already be a lack of germs and will be able to return to class with their hands clean. However, if there are external doors, this is more unsanitary as people would have touched the doors with or without handles. The second speaker also brought up the proposition that taking down external toilet doors will be inhygienic as there will be bad odors emitting from the toilets. However, this issue can be solved through quick and simple steps by disciplining our students to keep our toilets more sanitary, like flushing toilets, cleaning after themselves properly, and using air fresheners, which all makes much more sense than wiping down door handles every hour. Moreover, most cubicle doors are made so they open inwards, therefore keeping the smells contained within the stall. Thus, if toilets are kept in good condition, bad odors will hardly be a problem with or without external doors. As tours are already manufactured to prevent bad smells from escaping. So they also mentioned about bullying. But if removing external doors 
makes this impact, no matter how small or big, in helping prevent bullying? Shouldn't we try to make an impact on this issue, however small? Bullying increases all the time, and even if this is a small solution, by taking down external doors, we should take it. So Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, as our night comes to an end, I would like to summarize on behalf of the negative team. Initially, our first speaker spoke to you of the sanitary benefits of not having external doors, as there's fewer bacteria passed around due to door handles and pushing the doors. Moreover, not having external doors brings any inappropriate activities happening in the toilets, such as smoking, vaping, or even vandalism, vandalism to the teacher's attention. Our second speaker then explained how having external doors in toilets can make people from the gender queer community feel uncomfortable, shamed, or pressured to choose a toilet. So by taking down these external doors, we're not only breaking gender-based barriers, but also saving money and resources that can be put to better use. Therefore, we as a negative team continue to stand by the fact that they should not have external doors on school toilets. Thank you. I'm going to choose the candidates finalise the result. I will wait for speakers from the universities. We are delighted to announce that the grand finals will be held in the House of Assembly chamber on Saturday, the 24th of September 2022. Topics and site information for the semi-finals will be available on the debate and essay website from tomorrow morning. Please be sure to check your site and debate time information carefully. The debate will be held at 7 p.m. next year. I invite the representative of the adjudication panel to come forward to announce the result. First of all, I would like to congratulate both teams for making this final. You've each done a very good job to get to this stage. You've each done a wonderful job to win the debate. So, well done. Um, now, you would have noticed that there are three adjudicators at the panel debate, and for that reason, we don't give out individual feedback. Um, what I will do is I'll go through um, the best speaker award will give you brief reasons for a decision and I'll let you know whether our decision was unanimous or whether it was split. So I'll start off with the decision. As a panel, we thought one team developed a more clearer, more concise argument 
for that reason, award it to the inventor. So well done. Um, we've, we've given the, uh, the debating award tonight to Detran for an excellent new craft of the bubble. So well done to you. for giving us such a great debate. It was very much more challenging than obviously our other debates, and thank you. Uh, we would like to thank the adjudicators for adjudicating. We would like, find, we'd like to thank our parents and coaches for the support that they've given us throughout the season. Uh, we would like to thank Nazareth College for the venue, and last of all, we would like to thank Debating State for providing us with this opportunity to speak. Thank you for attending. I think I'm going to this debate as well.